Well, we finally found a Chevrolet we can actually afford. In this video, me and the kids are going to try to get this thing running, driving back on the road. But first, we're going to show you where we went to go pick it up. Here we go. Big thank you to Simply Safe for sponsoring this video and catching this footage of Ralphie. All right. I'm going to jump the driveway and make sure she's ready to video. Well, my wife over here, somebody contacted her and said that there were some cars for sale. Uh, apparently, uh, the dad died, right? Yes. And he's got some car, or the daughter has some cars for sale. So we're going to go look at what they have. And I didn't even have time to change clothes. So I'm actually in closed-toed footwear, which I hope I don't lose any subscribers over that. But I came straight from work to go look at this. So we're going to go see. This seems a little sketchy. Seems sketchy? No. I think we're here. Sure enough, looks like it. Bottom of that door right. Yeah, I think that one's probably farther gone than some of the other ones we've bought for sure. Yeah, Man, look at that. How cool is that old Pontiac, old Ford one ton? It's got some old cool mercury valve covers. I don't know. Somebody swap the engine into this thing or just swap the valve covers. You got a big shifter. Oh, you love the big shifters, don't you? Yeah. Ah, uh, Malibu. Man, I wish it was a two-door. Two-door would be nice. Well, small block. At least it's not a V6 car. Air conditioning, power brakes. It's nice. Yeah, she was saying that the interior was actually really nice. Her mom used to drive the car. Ooh, it stinks in here. It's definitely getting some water in there, isn't it? We're used to that. Yeah. Well, it has a window that, a vent window that pops open in the back door. Isn't that kind of cool? Weird. I wonder why they didn't have them in the front, but they have it in the back. Mm -hmm. Too new, wrecked, no thank you. Now, they made some of these. They made some of these at five speed. And this one's an auto. It came from down there all the way up to that bumper. But it is a V8 car. So, yeah. It smells so moldy in here. Golly, if, uh, you could clean the mold up, though, the interior's not in terrible shape considering how much water damage it's had. I kind of like it. What you think, honey? I mean, do you do you want me to tell you what I think? What do you think? I mean, it's all you. It's all me. It's not me. I wish it was me. a wagon. I would just love it if it was a wagon. You love every wagon on there. Need the carburetor on that 305. 305, full barrel. Not much action on the engine. I'm trying to turn it over. Well, we bought the Malibu, so. We got that white four-door Malibu that was over there. Do you approve, Ralphie? I guess. You know which one I'm talking about? Yeah. That white square four-door car. So we got that, so we're gonna have to come back uh, as soon as we can get hooked up to the trailer or get the dad's roll back over here and get that thing. But 305, turbo 350 probably, it's a three-speed auto. And, uh, you know, decent, you know, decent interior just needs all the mold cleaned up. We're used to all that, but, um, you know, my favorite kind of cars, right, honey? The big, square, ugly car. Well, not big, but square, Are ugly cars from the 80s. Are you going to rims on it? I ain't putting no donk rims on lower that. Lower it. You should lower no. it. But, you know, you can't beat small block Chevy, rear-wheel drive, 80s square car with good interior. I mean, you got to buy them, right? Well, it's actually been like, I don't know, a week and a half or so, two weeks since we decided we were going to buy this Malibu. So now we're going to hook up to the trailer. We got Tyler helping today. Ralphie's driving the truck. We're gonna go hook it up to the trailer and go get this Malibu. Squeeze lemons. Squeeze lemons. Squeeze lemons. Oh, he squeezed that lemon there. The baby calves are out here by the fence. This guy over here is half Brahma, so he's got some funny little ears. Oh, scared him. Hey, girl. You know how to do this? Yeah. 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 Okay. 
Yeah. Give it a shove there, Tyler. Oh, see? That's all we need was Tyler to do it. Vainia's out here. What are you doing, Vainia? What are you doing? You gotta get some air for them cases. Ready to go, oh, Oliver? Really you wanna get another car? Huh? Well, we gotta drive two vehicles because we got a baby, we got a babysit and the other car. We got Tyler hanging out with us today. So we're gonna take two vehicles. Luckily, it's not that far from where we live though. I mean, there ain't no lower class than Tennessee trash. Y'all remember that commercial? Somebody on this video knows that commercial. Look at the ditch, it's full of trash. There she is on the left, that's my beauty. This video is sponsored by Simply Safe. Simply Safe is an easy to use, customizable home security system that is free from contracts or hidden costs. And having just upgraded their system, their new devices are half the size with double the range and five times the speed. Simply Safe is an incredibly effective, reliable home security that will make sure your home is safe. If you've been feeling worried about safety but putting off dealing with it, you don't have to wait another minute. Simply Safe makes it really easy to secure your home. You just order it online or over the phone. It's delivered right to your home and you set it up yourself in under an hour. From there, your home is professionally monitored 24-7. If anything happens, they'll make sure the police get called. They've got sensors to cover every window, room, door, Door, plus lots of great extras like water sensors, temperature sensors, and HD cameras. It's all really easy to use, and you get around-the-clock protection for just 50 cents a day with no contracts. They've even won U.S. News World Report's Best Overall Home Security System for 2020. You know, with a family like ours, with a lot to protect, with three kids, like 50 animals, tons of cars, garage, uh, we recently have got interested in doing a security system, so we got with Simply Safe. The installation and setup was fast and easy. It took us no time to mount all the sensors and keypads, and the monitoring center will call the police if anything at all goes wrong. They alert the police immediately. We tested all the sensors. Everything worked great. No problems whatsoever out of it. The Simply Safe system comes with a ton of sensors like motion, water, glass break, door entry, heat sensors as well as a panic button. There's a keypad to arm and disarm the system, or you could just use the key fobs that go on your keychain. We have a doorbell camera now, as well as outside security cameras, because you never know what kind of people are gonna be sneaking around your property. You gotta keep your stuff safe, guys, so go to Simply Safe. So to check out Simply Safe's award-winning security that keeps your home safe around the clock, go to simplysafe.com slash sleeperdude. Link in the description below. That ought to air up. Look, look down there. Rise up like Lazarus. Oh yeah, it's gonna hit up too. How flat it is. I love watching them come up out of the dirt like that. Put on disengage. Which way? Clean up what we as long as them cars you buy that we can't fill in the trailer. Right? Yeah. Okay, 90, what was it, 97 on the tag? Yeah. 97? That's crazy. You gonna last that hood? You know those guys out there that take their ratchet straps, they wrap them up real nice, they put probably rubber bands around them or bows, ribbons. I'm not that kind of guy. I just throw them all in here and then get mad what, what oh, we got our dirt report Wait, we got a pine cone in there ralphie what's that right there you know what that is no looks like a mouse's nest or something 
Uh, not too much to speak of on here. Got a little bit of oil leak there where the probably the transmission is. But anyway, let's get this thing home, get her unloaded, see what we got. Basketball game, so we don't have our helpers anymore to unload this thing. Your helpers come. Oh, we got help now. I look under here while it's up on there. Look, I've got a dent up gas tank. Probably a 7.5 rear end. Most of these had those, I believe. Got a little bit of rust in the, the floor pan on the uh, passenger rear here. Just a little bit here on the driver's rear. What do you think, Rocky? But pretty solid though, considering. I'm just glad it rolled. You have to inspect every car we buy. Oh no, no, his daughter does, but he doesn't. <laughs> Come on, Rocky. What do you think about it? Tell us. So, looks like I'm going to need some distributor stuff, which these have an HEI distributor, looks like. So, that shouldn't be too hard. Maybe we can just get a cap and rotor and stuff. Plug plug wires. I didn't ever check. Okay, good. The plugs are in it, so that's good. So we're gonna have to do all the ignition stuff on it. These plugs are all bent over. Why would that be? But somebody stole the carb off of it, but they gave us that carburetor that uh they thought might have went on it. So we'll we'll get it we'll get the carburetor going and get the ignition stuff and maybe this thing will run. I wonder if it'll turn over. Not yet. Why are these plugs bent over? I've never seen, it's almost like the engine got dropped or something, but that's weird. I'm surprised at how well the interior held up considering the, the roof leak, but guys, tell us in the comments, why the heck does this thing have windows in the back that don't roll down? It has no window cranks and no power window wires running to it. So the window is fixed in the back door, which, you know, I've always been more of a Ford guy, it seems like with these 80s cars. I'm not familiar with why they don't roll down. Maybe there's money in it? Okay, so we got, we got the jack, some trim. Looks like some AC lines they've taken off. What is this? What's this gonna tell us? Oh, baby powder. It doesn't really tell us much about the car. We've got too many project vehicles. Did you get everything they had? Well, it's everybody's favorite time now, the old advertising. Now, these things were produced from 1978 to 1983, and uh, they're usually referred to as G-bodies is what I've always been told. Uh, they made a two-door, a four-door, and a station wagon in these, but you know me. I love the old advertising. I hope you guys like it. These things are really cool. You know how I love Ford Fairmonts, and these cars are very, very similar uh, looking to a Fairmont the only big difference between these and uh, like the Fairmont is these are a full frame car so they're a little bit heavier but you know they're a little bit stiffer as well so it's kind of depends on what you like but I love these things they look so cool so it's been a couple days now since uh we got it here and, and looked it over I had to order some parts for it so we're gonna start out trying to pull the plugs out of this thing. As usual, put a little bit of oil down on the cylinders, try to get loosened up, figure out the carburetor and the ignition situation because somebody robbed this thing. They just stole parts off of it. And that's unfortunate for me because I had to buy more things because they stole some stuff off of it. Don't steal people, come on. I don't know if it's on. I Are you there now? Yeah, I think so. Is it loose? Yeah. Were they already loose? Yeah. It's like finger tight in there? 
Oh, well, somebody left them loose. That's weird. What do they look like? Let's look at them. I don't know why all the ceramics are busted. It's almost like the heads were sitting somewhere and they just stuck them on this engine and never that replaced the plug. Like yeah, they're all like broke. Okay. How do you work with them nails, Wawa? Uh, well, see, you gotta have patience. Patience to work with nails? That one wasn't that tight either, was it? No. Was it finger tight too? Mm-hmm. What's up with that? Bend them all. Then they're smart plugs so I can't drive. Exactly. Well, yeah. That gets older, and I think when he's too crazy himself. to drive. Yes. And he's like, gonna try to do burnout with the car that can't even. So, where's the other? The other? It's, it's, six wait, wait, it's not a six cylinder. It's an eight. They're in the back. Oh. Y'all miss the back ones. Well, that's kind of hard to get to. Yeah, the back ones are always the hardest. Got it. Race. Oh. Ralphie one. one. Yep. So all those wait, wait, wait. just kind of look equally second. bad. What? What? Hold on a hey, you can't help Ralphie beat you. No, yeah. I didn't know he was doing a race. You know? I literally said race, and then you said at the going. end. I think you said race at the end. Yeah, and then she started oh, going. Okay. Like, Listen, I cannot. Is this your first yes. time pulling spark plugs out? No, I just yes, pulled out three. <laughs> I mean, is this the first car you've ever pulled spark plugs out on? I think it is, right? I think you're. Pr I think when you get it with your hand, you're just turning it the wrong direction. Okay, that makes sense. There you go. That, no, that, that was the only one that wasn't broke. The one I dropped here. Does it turn over? I don't know. We're about to see. Anyway, what we're going to do now, we have our paint gun cleaner bottle. And we are going to spray marble mystery oil down the cylinders. If I can find the cylinder, where's that? Just to try to get it lubricated up to see if we can see if this engine's stuck or not. There it goes. Marvel, do your magic. I hope the fuel pump and stuff is still good on this thing. Good thing about these old Chevrolets is, I mean, pretty much every part on this engine costs $5. It's nothing like these Mopars or Fords, you know. Just buy anything cheap. And everything from forever has the same bell housing flange which is the big mistake ford made was uh changing up all the bell housing flanges uh chevrolet really was good with that about keeping the same bell housing flange you could take a four-cylinder car and pull the engine out and put a v8 and it bolt right up the same flange give it a little bit down the intake as well so good news with this is the spark plug size appears to be the same size as the crank well, you know, we try, already tried to turn this thing over uh, with a belt and it wouldn't turn over. So, uh, there we go. It's gonna, uh, on. Yeah. We're going to try to turn this thing over at least one full revolution here. To make sure all the valves open and shut. We don't have any issues. So, also turn the motor all the way around. We push out if there's any fluids in the cylinders. We still have all the spark plugs out. This will get any extra fluid out of the cylinders. At least we know we don't have a broke timing chain because the rotor's turning when I turn the engine, so that's good. What are you doing, Rocky? Everybody's been wondering where you was. Granny, here she are looking beautiful today. She's a looker, ain't she, boys? Okay. Yeah, put your thumb in that hole. And you tell me when it starts pushing air real hard, like boom. Oh, it did. Oh, there you go. So that's, that's coming up on top dead center number one, compression stroke. So we need to know that to get our firing order correct. So when it stops hissing like that, it's going to be at the top. That's it, isn't it? Isn't mm -hmm. it? All right, we're at top dead center right there. Well, at least our engine's freed up. That's a really good sign. I'm going to go ahead and replace the rotor while we have it apart. You know, just good insurance. Hopefully our... Ignition module, whatever deal is good in this thing. This is your vacuum advance. So as your vacuum increases and decreases, it moves the base plate in here, 
which adjusts your ignition timing. Then these springs here, this is your mechanical advance. So as your RPM increases, Rocky wanted to learn. So as your RPM increases, it swings those weights, counterweights out. And you can change how tight your tension is on the spring, Rocky, to get, <laughs> to get advance come in at a higher or lower RPM. What is he thinking? Rocky, you're the most people person goat I've ever met in my life. You know, we're not doing a cleanup video, Rocky. We're doing a will it start, then we'll clean it up. You're getting in the wrong order. This is not being a good helper. No. This would be helping if we were doing a cleanup video. So this is our new rotor here. That's our old one. It looks to be the correct thing. Don't you think so, Rocky? You're not even looking at it. An HEI distributor is nice because it's easy to wire up usually, but man, they're ugly as can be. They're huge. But anyway, we had to get a new cap, had to even get a new coil. So we're going to put all that together, put that on there, get our firing order correct. So the, the yellow wire goes on this side, red one on that side. It's got a ground strap that goes up under the coil. Then you got a ground wire here that goes right here. So we're still waiting on the coil cover. We ordered it but we're still waiting on it. So we're gonna go ahead and bolt this down for now until we get that. There's a little bit of a notch right there. You got these little spring-loaded deals right here that hold the cap down. Squeezy, you don't wanna come over here and work on the car? What do you wanna do? Watch this. We got Wawa trying to put the new spark plugs in for us. They all appear to be gapped correctly. Is this even going right? Sorry guys if there's a lot of wind noise in this video because uh, we're outside and it's windy in Tennessee, but it's perfect weather. Why wouldn't you be outside? Why did GM do the enormous AC box? Like, other manufacturers could fit it under the dash. I don't understand why they had to put it out here with the engine. It really gets in the way. Well, I got my four in, Wawa. Where are you at? Where? I'm on my third one and I can't no, see. No, three. Oh, man, she's not I swear, I think I want it. It appears there's no no water at all. I like the way he did the hold down, though. Coat hanger for the wind there. Is it not on there, honey? I think maybe she had a thing on loose end because it was the spring in there. I think you have yours on loose end. Oh, my God. You get it? But Mom got it. That's Good job, mind. Mom. Thank you. So on a small block Chevy, as every man in the world knows, it's 18436572 and it rotates clockwise. So this is 13572468. You want to just put them all over the engine bay like spaghetti so they get on the exhaust and burn up and you got to buy another set. Ralphie said it had just a little bit of brakes. So, man, wh ooh, what would it be like to have a car that still had brakes? Still got fluid in there. So this guy here. I need to make sure it's in the right order, but it should plug up right there. We need that cap to hold this down, really. This should be our power wire here for the coil. These little HEIs are not much to them. What does that go to? Anybody know what that goes to? Tweet it in the comments. What's that go to? Tweet that too. Tweet it all. Where's the 5.5? So I'm gonna go ahead and take the uh, the positive battery cable off. It's missing an end, and I don't have a spare battery cable end I bought, but I did have a new cable sitting around here, so I'm gonna put it on there instead. Got our, our old trusty batteries here. Now, I'm gonna admit, when I tighten that up, it cracked the solenoid on the starter, so I'm really hoping that the starter still works. Well, let's see if it lets any smoke out here. Huh? I don't see any sparks, that's a good sign. I don't know that I've ever tightened up a battery cable. Just twist them on or give them a little tap, you're good to go. This really takes me back to my childhood. My dad used to deliver the mail in the 81 Cutlass, and I used to ride in that when I was a kid. But uh, This thing actually has a key and a seat that doesn't work. So we're going to see if the engine will turn over. We still don't have a carb on it, obviously, but we're going to see if it'll turn over. Buzzing. <laughs> Hey, that's good news. Turns over with a key. I mean, that doesn't happen all the time around here. 
So, at least it turns over. Here's the issue. There's no dipstick on this engine. We can't find a dipstick anywhere aside from the one standing over it right now. So we're gonna go ahead probably and change the oil so we know we have the correct amount of oil in it. But I just, Wawa just got it. She just got the joke about the dipstick. But I said there's no dipstick in this engine except for the one sitting over it right now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and change the oil on it. That way we know we have enough oil even though we don't have a dipstick. Oh my lord, this oil pan sunk in worse than the back of my jeans. Golly, it looks like they jacked the car up by the oil pan. I hope the pickup tube's working all right. Let's see what surprises lay ahead of us here. Ooh, well, it does have oil in it. That's good, it looks pretty black and thick. Oh, only oh, that man like was barely flowing and then some big chunk came through and now it's flowing good again it's pretty chunky soup in there it looks like i just wonder why they how they crushed the bottom of the oil pan like that did they jack it up it's like a sharp dent right there well the oil definitely looks burnt and it was pretty chunky there for a little bit it almost stopped the uh drain hole up but you know, not terrible. We probably would have ran on it for a while. Take your bets now on how tight the oil filter is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Arnold couldn't get that off. Come on. Is it not even going to come off of the pliers? Oh, my gosh, that's tight. Uh, poked holes in already. Uh, man, that was super tight. Here lately I've been pre-filling these oil filters with Marvel Mystery Oil because it's really thin and it you know goes through both sides of the filter element really quickly. I like the Marvel because it seems to help hydraulic lifters come back to life that have been sitting for a long time. Oh yeah, spill it. There you go. Of course we got our trusty Wix filter on here. Well, as always. You want to tighten that thing down where nobody can ever get it back off. You know, you don't want it falling off there. That that goes for your drain plug too. Because you really want to get that thing so tight that you got to replace the pan next time you change your oil, really. I'm waiting on the, the base plate gasket and the fuel inlet fitting that somebody had stole off the carburetor. So that's how it's supposed to be coming in the morning. Really, the only other thing I can do this evening is I'm going to check and make sure we have spark. And uh, that way we'll be ready to go tomorrow. Old socks or something? It smells like a mildew, like an old person. <laughs> well, well, I need you to crank it over. I'm going to see if it's getting fire out here. Okay, tell me when. When. Okay. All right, all right. Yeah, we're getting fire, so we probably just need fuel now. So here's the carburetor that... They're thinking it might be for this car. They just gave it to me. So it's missing the fuel inlet fitting. I bet one of you guys got it somewhere at your house, but I had to order one from the parts store. I'm going to go ahead and clean this thing up a little bit and see if it looks like we can use it. It's got to give me a nice coating. And you just scrub. Ralphie likes scrubbing his carburetors, don't you? Yeah, it's like my third one. You string on. I literally actually do love it. it smells good. You do know the outside of the carburetor doesn't really affect I how it don't runs. care. Okay. I like it to look shiny and good. Everybody keeps saying we need a ultrasonic cleaner. What do you mean? It's like uh, I don't know, it like pulses the fluid or something. I don't know. It's fine. So guys, here's the secret of the Quadrajet carburetor. It has small uh, throttle blades on the primary side for good fuel mod and large ones for the back, for the secondaries. 
for lots of CFM. So they're actually really good for fuel mileage and power Can if I they're tuned right. Yeah, we need like a razor blade probably. What is it you like about scrubbing on stuff? I don't know. I just like stuff to work with. I don't trust you with a razor blade yet. <laughs> Do you trust me? No, that's what I'm saying. I don't trust you with a razor blade yet. There's talking to Wawa. No. A lot of these carburetors flowed like 700 CFM or more. They actually flow really good. All right, all right, all right. Let's, let's crack the lid open and see what we see down there. So the little retainer clip is missing off that accelerator pump rod. Maybe we can crack this thing open without having to put a gasket set through it. That would be nice. Okay. Yeah, there's your, I think it's called your metering rods, I believe there. This is your accelerator pump. Still looks like it's in decent shape. So, some of the early cars I drove when I first got my license had a quadrajet. I drove a 1980 Buick Park Avenue to high school. That was the main car I drove. And then some of the time I got to drive my dad's 87 Monte Carlo SS, both of which or quadrajet powered cars. Okay, there's your needle and your seat, your float. Man, it's crazy how little that float is compared to a lot of four barrel carburetors. You mean four barrel. Yeah, exactly. So I see uh, some trash down in the bowl there and those jets. We'll go ahead and spray all that out while we got it open. Try to spray down those <laughs> right in my mouth. Those seem to be free. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> Still like high. So we got about, that's only about three quarters of a turn out on them. So I'm gonna pull these out now that I know how far out they were and spray down through the idle mixture circuit. So we're gonna put our, our needle back in our seat here Sit the float back down in this thing. Yeah. In the desert, you can't remember your name. I think they need to check with that. It's true. They wrote a song about it. What? In the desert, you can't remember your name. Wait. I don't know what you're talking about. There's a lot of little rods and stuff. Now, I wouldn't go so far as to say a quadrajet was the first carburetor I ever rebuilt. Rebuilt's probably strong language. Quadrajet was the first carburetor I ever took apart as a kid. There was one sitting in my grandpa's uh, garage and uh, I bought a carburetor kit for it, or my dad did one, and I, I tore that thing apart and put it back together. And I never ran on anything. I just wanted to tear into it. I was probably about Ralphie's age when that happened. Well, it's not perfect, but it's probably better than it was now. I just thought I got all those rods. These guys here were not lined up right, and it was got in a bind, so I had to take them off and put them back in separately. It's a lot of stuff to get hooked up at the same time. I just realized that the choke uh, rod is completely missing from this scenario, so this is going to be a manual choke, like, like with your hands manual <laughs> choke. Well, we have completely ran out of daylight out here, but I figured before we went in, I better put oil in it before I forget it. I bet a couple of you guys forgot to put oil on a brand new engine build and crank that sucker, didn't you? Let me know. Of course, we're using our normal uh, diesel oil here. That's why I run everything. Usually I run the Rotella 540 is my favorite one to run in, in the stuff we have around here. Well, I think that's all for tonight. We're going to go watch some Jeopardy, eat some Vanyas. Kids have already gave up on me and went inside, so hopefully they got the channel already turned on for me. It's bedtime, Walkie. You got to go back to bed. All right. Good night, buddy. I'll see you in the morning.
So we're headed back to town now because our first fuel fitting that they ordered was wrong. So I had them order a different one that I looked up. It's supposed to be here and the carburetor flange gasket uh, supposed to have come in earlier, didn't come in, so they reordered it for me. So we're gonna go get these parts and hopefully finally try to start this Malibu. So I'm at Tractor Supply looking for a bolt for this carburetor. So I had this one, which is a three inch long bolt. It won't even stick through there. So this is a four inch long bolt they have here. It's too long. I was like, oh, okay, I'll just get a, you know, they got this size, they got that size. I'll just get a three and a half. Oh, man. How's these things happen? So we're back home now. We got our fitting in there. It's part number 55140 from Dorman. But I also got a three eighths metal line that has the tube nuts on it. I'm gonna cut it off somewhere in here and we can hook a rubber hose up to it. All right, there we go. So that should be able to put a rubber hose on there. Up your nose with a rubber hose. Uh -uh. So what we ended up having to do was I had to buy a Holly to Quadrajet adapter flange to get a Quadrajet gasket. Cause the one they ordered ended up coming in as a heat shield. So hopefully this will work. That gasket seems to match up good. I hope this grade eight bolt is strong enough to hold this carburetor down. You think dad's gonna like when he gets back or is he gonna think it was? He's probably gonna be like, yeah, dude. Oh, shh. Not everything else we can think of. <clears throat> so we're gonna put an inline fuel filter here. These quarter jets actually have an internal filter, but ours doesn't because I didn't buy one. But I'm gonna do this one where I can see if it's pumping or not. Got a return spring hooked up here. The fitting in the back doesn't match the metal line that went there. So we're probably gonna plug the back one. So I hooked up the booster up front here, hooked up our vacuum advance, and we're gonna plug that vacuum port in this one. So this back here is a quarter inch pop thread fitting. So I'm just gonna put a plug in it for now. Well, we could get a correct, you know, fitting thing here to hook that up or bolt or something, but why do all that when a zip tie works, you know? Since we don't know the condition of the fuel in the tank, and it's probably super old, I'm gonna unhook the fuel supply hose here and uh, run it to a boat tank, probably. Well, we're gonna have to steal the boat tank from Ralphie. Steal her. <laughs> Ralphie and Mom here off the F-100. We're gonna have to get the fuel tank cleaned out on this F-100 so we don't need a boat tank anymore. Or just get a new one. Yeah. I don't have any more 3 8 fuel line around here. I'm going to try to squeeze this 5 16 line over this bar if I can. That's what this is for right here. Ralphie, bring me that boat tank. I mean, <laughs> this is like the worst smelling car. And the interior looks really nice, but it smells. Okay, so now we got a fuel system. What else we got to do, Ralphie? We got the carburetor hooked up. Do an awesome burnout. Uh, we're not the burnout wow. stage yet. I'm gonna go ahead and air my flat case up before we try to crunk this thing. You don't want to crunk one with a flat case. I'm gonna put some fuel down in the bowl. This happens to have some marble mystery oil in it to, you know, lubricate. Let's try it. <laughs> Are you kidding me? No oh, it's brand. What is it? What is it? It leaks everywhere. It's right there. It leaks everywhere. Oh, our needle and seat's probably hung up. It's sprung back here somewhere too. There's two leaks. One here and one way back. Okay. Dad's diagnosing it here. It is the oil sending unit not seeing it with the oil line that went to the oil pressure gauge so that was oil spraying back here we also have a leak on our fuel inlet right here some for some reason yeah there's the copper line that goes to the oil pressure gauge and it just totally broke loose so at least we do have oil pressure that's good from memory i think these are eighth inch pipe thread fittings back here for the oil pressure sending in on these chevrolets i should be able to just plug it yeah that's what it is 
Could you stop it off with like chewing gum, play doh or something? Uh, it probably wouldn't hold, I don't think. Man. Could we weld one up or something like that? Well, it'd have to be a steel one, like the brass ones. You couldn't do that. I just can't believe I don't have one here, and I did not. I'm tired of going to town. We could weld the end of this up probably and make that work. What do you think? Yeah, let's go. Dad ended up pointing out that the 90 degree fitting won't fit, so we're gonna weld up this uh, straight fitting here. Perfect. All you need is a good mud puddle to cool that thing off. Hopefully this will keep it from leaking uh, if I did a good job welding it. I just can't believe it started first turn on there, you know? Yeah. And uh, clearly this was not even the carburetor that came off this car because the fittings and stuff aren't the same. I so, thought it would. You thought it would start first turnover? Yeah. Here, I can't believe it. I mean, we must have done something right. I don't know if I just didn't tighten this enough. I was afraid to strip it out, but maybe I just didn't tighten it enough. We've never had a car leak this darn bad first startup. I couldn't believe how much it leaked. Well, not. since this thing fired, it's getting the royal treatment now. It's getting some real antifreeze. New. Not that diluted stuff either. Don't give me that 50% antifreeze. I want the real deal. Don't you give me ethanol in my gasoline? And don't you dilute my antifreeze with water. I'll do it myself. Don't spill it's it. water. Well, we put straight antifreeze in. We gotta put some water in there. The face you're making. You're so serious about antifreeze, aren't you? I wanna check this right in. <laughs> Get down there and look, see if it's leaking. It's not. We're good? Only where you spill it. Well. Okay, Ralphie, let's try this again. Tell me if it leaks, Ralphie. Gas, huh? It's the same place. Pouring out. Right. Pour it out. Pour it out. Right there, pour right out. there, and out there. What's I think the pouring pour is, you know. What's the deal? What did you do to it, Dad? Man, it's pouring out. Is it leaking from here or here? Does this fit match up to that? It's got the right type of end on it? Uh, probably. Like I'm pretty sure it's leaking. Look, from this right is there. like. I don't know that cranking that anymore is going to help anything. It feels really tight already. It's in there dripping. What do you think it'd take to fix these leaks, Rocky? Huh? You just worried about your animal crackers right now? Let's try it again. It's coming from here? Yeah, it's not the big one, it's that one. I wonder why, because that's a brand new. Yeah, go. this right here we have fuel directly dripping on our exhaust so i'm gonna have to replace this fuel hose hopefully i can get that to seal up and i checked the transmission fluid and we're at least a couple quarts low on transmission fluid but man I, i'm really surprised that it, it crunk up that easy and ran even though it does seem like it's run on maybe not all eight but that could be like a carburetor issue it might clear out once we try to move it under its own power 
It has a built-in filter. I don't know. That's good, huh? Mm-hmm. You think that'll filter out the Toyota out of this fluid? No. It's red. I mean, how could it be wrong? It's... I don't know. Maybe it's not. Well, the fact that this is super rusty on the outside is not helping, but somebody's just cut through this because it used to go straight into the carburetor with a metal line, but somebody's cut right through it. Alright, try it. super peppy like I'm surprised how good the carburetor is responding it's doing very well. it sounds great <laughs> it'll sound better if we cut the exhaust off of it puffing on blue smoke yeah it's puffing some smoke for sure He's just a jewel. It's really responsive, but the brakes like something's seriously wrong with the either master cylinder or boost or one of the We should see if he'll do a burnout now. You have to. It, it already look it already looks like you are doing a burnout. <laughs> hey, just because it smokes don't mean it's broke. That's right. Oh, uh -oh. <laughs> you kind of stumbled there. Here you go. Like once it gets under a hard load, it's stumbling. It's like a stall test. Yeah. Well, it will turn the casings over, but it, it won't uh, really pull through it. I don't know. I mean, probably some timing and ignition adjustments, and we can fix that, though. And think? carburetor. Yes. yes. Carburetor. Yeah. <laughs> 
get out here and check make sure we don't have anything <laughs> crazy i want to try to hit that a little faster though <laughs> what it's fun. you like it yeah well is it, it i think this is leaking yeah we're splashing out right there is it leaking out right there i don't think so nah. i think we're good we're good we're good in front of me it's definitely got a caliper or wheel cylinder or something sticking for sure and the master cylinder's not right but that ain't stopping us. Will it start up hot? Perfect. Breathe on that key. We're gonna hit this one from the farthest point we can. Oh god. You ready, Ralphie? Yeah. Here you go. Just like Evil Knievel. Evil. This is what we've been training for. Oh god. Oh god. even in a seat belt but it's like as soon as you touch the draw it spins because the brakes are holding you back but i don't know how many more miles it's got on these brakes well that was great <laughs> uh, wawa's gonna ride in are now. we doing the same thing uh yeah we're gonna jump the driveway again here okay. put your seat belt on as soon as you let out the throttle this thing stops you because it breaks I just, I'm just glad we finally have a car that awesome. we didn't have to replace all the brakes to just move it, and the casings hold air for now. Okay, okay, uh, well, Oh, this is gonna be awesome. for a little bit man i mean usually the brakes won't work at all at all but at least they work just enough to get this thing going uh it's really fun to drive i hope we keep this car you think so i think yeah, we should keep it? I, love it I just noticed i hadn't even looked this 1989 was the last inspection on it it was 89 the last tag was 97 so that's 25 years right there and I'm surprised that the brakes are doing anything whatsoever with that. We're going to have to flush the gas tank out, though, and uh, get where it's actually brakes. pulling from the tank. And, of course, work on the brakes. That's all we do right now is work on brakes. We, every car we get, we have to work on the brakes. That's because every car we get has been actually sitting for, like, 20 years yeah. or more. So that's what happens when they sit that long. But you know how we finish off the videos around you here? Do it. You want to do it? You don't have no shoes on. Oh, you want to do it off my shoe? Here. Here you go. Remember, drink your RC Colas. Oh, eat your Vienas. They're good for you. You know, whatever flavor you like. I like the bourbon barbecue. Some people have bad taste, you know? Pour one out for your homies. You check us out on our second channel, Sleeper Dude 2. No space, the number two. Check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at Sleeper Dude 88. Sleeper Dude was already taken, so what are you going to do about it? Sit, Ellie. Sit. There you go. Man, she's fast. She is the fastest Vienna eater we have around here. But we'll have more videos to come of this. We'll probably get all the brake stuff. Uh, next will probably be a cleanup video on this car because it should be a pretty epic cleanup video. 
it's pretty mildewy and nasty inside there because the water leaked from the roof vinyl tops you know who would have known it ruined every car that ever got one but you can see below we got our merchandise you can click on the merchandise tab buy you a t-shirt so, Ra so ralphie can have some more vainas bad throw on my part that was a bad throw i mean what are you gonna do every now and then you get a bad throw <laughs> it bounced out of you. Come on, eat your vainas. Oh no, not the, if you have like small Come on. To like People tell tell Wawa to eat her vainas. You know? They're healthy. Aren't they, honey? Don't. Aren't they healthy? Don't start me. Come on, they're healthy. Uh -uh. Eat one. No. Just uh -uh. one. Uh -uh. The time, the second time we went over the driveway with him, I did not think I was gonna get her slowed down before I hit the hay spike down there on the other end of the yard. But we're gonna have to do some brake work for sure on this thing. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you say we're going to have to do some brake work, Wawa? Wouldn't you say so? <laughs> yes, we need to. But you can't beat a $500 car. It's got good casings. The brakes kind of work. I mean, I could make it down to the store and get me a can of dip right now on this thing. Oh, my God, Dad. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. We got all kinds of other project cars around here. We got like 15 of them, so stay tuned. You might like it, what we do with some of these other cars. We got Galaxies, Falcons, Thunderbirds, Fairmonts, Darts. That's about it. Fal Ford truck. Ford uh, truck. Wait, Fairmont. I said that. Mini uh, Winnie. We got a lot of stuff. But anyway, we'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. We couldn't do it without you guys. Without you guys watching the videos, we wouldn't be able to do this stuff. Thank you very much. Tell them bye, Rocky. Tell them see you later. All right. See you, buddy.